Hello and welcome back. We have finally reached the point in our application where we're going to start looking at doing the actual implementation of the passport library as well as the authentication strategy. We're going to be implementing the local one in our HTTP server. So up until this point, we've been putting all the moving parts that we've needed to, to get a basic server up and running. And now the very next step is to start wiring up the, the routing onto the login route and then create a set of routes that will need to be kind of locked down and authenticated. So before we actually start implementing the code, let's just take a step back and, and take a look at a high level flow of how the authentication is gonna work. When we go through this flow, I just want you to keep two things in mind here. Just remember that HTTP or RESTful type APIs like we're building in this case, they designed to be stateless. So that means every single request is treated as like an isolated entity that doesn't know about any of the other previous requests or requests that are going to come. It just only knows about its own data that it is being requested in, in that request response cycle. So in terms of authentication, this does create a, a challenge for these kind of stateless servers. The way that we typically do this is implement some kind of strategy to add a layer of authentication on top of, of the request. And so you'll probably be familiar with these type of things. They're either cookies or some type of token-based data that appended to each request. The server will be able to take that piece of data through the token or the cookie and then validate whether it's a legitimate validated request that can access certain sensitive endpoints and stuff like that. So I've put together this sequence or flow diagram here just to kind of explain what we're going to be doing specifically. We've got our five verticals here um, on the, the far left, we've got the client and then we have the server and then the next up passport, our database, and then something called cookie sessions. So we start from the, the top left, the client. And in our case, what we've been using throughout the course is Postman. We're going to initiate a, a login post request to the server. The idea here is that we're going to use a function called authenticate from the passport library. And this is going to be wired up to the, the login route. And then this is going to initiate a whole lot of passport middleware that's going to be doing the heavy lifting for us in terms of putting the pieces in place to kind of go through a typical authentication process. So that layer between the server and passport is going to be invoked by the, the authenticate function. And then it's going to, through a series of callbacks, give us information and a callback for us to be able to verify that the user is actually in our database that the password that is coming through on that, that login request is correct and valid. If both of those checks are passed, it's going to return the result back to the passport authenticate function. And then it like kind of hand it back to our server to kind of do whatever we want to do with it. And at this stage, we will create a an authenticated session and we will serialize that information through the use of cookies. And we're gonna make use of a package called cookie session. So that serialized data is going to then be signed and then it'll be returned back to the server once that validation of a successful user has been sent back to a server, then we can then create a session. And the, the idea with the session is that it's going to store that extra piece of data on a future HTTP requests in the form of a cookie. That's the strategy we're going to use. We're going to use cookie session to kind of serialize and stuff some information in there. In this case, we'll just be like a user ID and then we'll sign that session. And so once the cookie session does its thing, it's going to send that flow back to the server and then the server then will respond with it. 200 okay uh, setting the the authenticate or, or the cookies containing the the information that we need as well as the mechanisms to kind of validate that every request with that cookie is a valid one and we can just go about business as you okay so that's a very high level overview of how the authentication process is going to work for the case of the the login endpoint and that's the the endpoint that's going to be doing the work to to authenticate a user let's take a short break here in the next lesson, we're going to actually get back into Visual Studio Code and start wiring up Passport and the local strategy into our server to get this all up and running. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now. Now that we understand what the overall flow is going to look like, we're going to break it down into smaller pieces 
and just do this step by step. And we're going to be working in an iterative process here to, to implement this. So we'll be doing a couple of console logs here and there, a few uh, requests in Postman just to, to see how this is all working in a very like slow and foundational process. To start off with in my terminal, I'm just going to do two installs here. And the first package I'm going to install is the, the Passport package. And that's like the, the core library that Passport offers. So you'll notice, and I just want you to take note that we, we need to use a very very specific version of Passport here in order to get the cookie session working. If we head on over to, to GitHub, you'll see that there is an open issue here and there's a comment by the, the author, Jared Hansen here. Is a, a known issue with uh, the newer version of Passport, I think it's 0.60, where it's going to throw an error if you try and set this up with cookie session. He suggests for now that you, you pin the version of Passport to 0.5. Please take note, if you don't use uh, version five of Passport, you are going to run into errors down the line. So the way we're going to do this is say npm install, and then we'll reference that Passport package, use the at sign and then 0.5.0. And then we'll use this uh, flag called save exact. And that's just going to make sure that it pins the, the exact version and it won't update the versions in future installs of our or whenever we run npm install. So we can validate that that's indeed in there. You can see as opposed to some of the other packages, it doesn't have that little carrot there. And so that we know that it's pinned. And then the next package we're going to install is the passport local package. The reason that we're installing two packages here is uh, the way the, the passport library is built. They've got hundreds of different authentication strategies. And so they're kind of broken that whole library into pieces. So you don't have to import such a big one. So you import the core one, which was the, the passport library over here. And then the passport local, you can import as many strategies as you'll be using in your, your API. For us, it's just the local one. And that's the one we've imported. So once those have been installed, we can head on over to our index.js file. And we're just going to require these in at the top of our file. Just watch my spelling there. So it's going to be passport require passport and then the next one is we're going to use a uppercase l for local strategy and then we will require that from that passport local package and then we're going to use that dot syntax to reference the class strategy here and then you'll see my my ide highlights this in green and that just is to note that this is actually a in, uh, a class and the the convention is just to uppercase classes that are exported from a file like that so now that we've got the passport and the local strategy Let's head on over down to the part of our index.js file where we've been registering some of the middleware for our express server. And I'm going to give us some space to work with between the app.use express JSON and the line of code that we register our root app. And over here, we're going to register a new piece of middleware in our API. And this is going to be the, the passport. And then there's this method on the, the library called initialize, and we can just invoke that with parentheses. And so at this stage, the passport library has been initialized and it is registered as middleware in our API. Moving on, the next little bit that we need to do here is we're going to make a reference to the, the passport library. There is this function on here called use, and we're going to set this up. And, and this passport.use function is basically a piece in the authentication process that's going to handle some of the logic to verify the, the incoming user. And it's a, it's a place where we can do the actual work that we need to do to verify the username and the password. So this will make sense in a little bit. For now, if we hover over this use, you'll, you'll see that this passport.use take, uh, takes in a string and then a strategy. And so, so that is the overloaded method. The, the normal one, um, the simplified version just takes in a strategy. The overloaded method takes in a string where you can actually name strategies with your own kind of syntax within your API. So we're going to make use of that one. And we're going to name our strategy local here. And the next argument into the use function is going to be the local strategy, but we're going to instantiate that in line. So we'll say local strategy and this local strategy takes in uh, an options object, then a verify callback function. So the, the options that we're going to pass in here is there's this option here to pass request to callback and we're going to set that to true. And the, the very next argument in, 
into the local strategy instance is going to be a callback function. And this function, which acts as a, a callback here, is what we're going to refer to throughout our, our process of implementing this authentication flow is a verify function. Uh, it's going to literally, as the name suggests, it's going to be used to verify that the, the user is valid. This callback will receive a couple of arguments. Uh, as you may have guessed, because we've passed this request to the callback, the very first argument that we get back in this callback is the request. And that's coming through the, the express middleware. And then so next up, we will need to uh, have a username and a password argument here. This is at this stage going to be receiving this information from an upstream middleware as part of the, the login request. And the last one here is um, another callback called done, which we can then use to kind of notify the function that invokes this, that the processing has been done. Okay, and we're going to be making use of a few console logs just to kind of get an idea of what's happening. So I'm going to set this up real quick here. We'll do a console log and we'll just leave a message here. We'll say local strategy verify callback or CB for callback. And I'm going to leave a comment here. We're going to have to come to this later, but this is where we will call the DB to verify the user. So this piece of work we're going to save for later stage. What I want to do is just like get going and start implementing all the different moving parts. So we'll just kind of move this incrementally and get it closer to the, the finished product. This stage, what I'm going to do is a return and we're going to return the callback done. And, and this callback is going to take in two parameters here, either an error or a user object. We're going to be making a lot of use of these done um, callbacks in, in the different passport functions. And so just so that you know, if you pass in null for the error, that kind of indicates to password that everything went okay and if the the user is some kind of truthy value then it's going to kind of assume that the the validation steps that you needed to do in your database worked well so for now let's just set up a, a little object here that we can test with it's going to be a very simple one i'll just put a key of id and then a string of test and then the error at this stage will be null so if if there was an error and we'll see this down the line then you can actually pass in a string or an actual like JavaScript error and Passport will kind of handle that in, in the way that it, it it's written to do in it, its library. Quite simple, we've imported the Passport package, set up the local strategy, we've initialized Passport, we've started implementing this verify function. At this stage, let's get our server up and running. I'm gonna hit an NPM start just to make sure that everything's working. Let's just head on over to Postman and just do one of our register requests to make sure everything's working fine. And after firing that off, I see there's a 200 OK. We're still logging our, our user that's created when into our MockDB. So that's all looking good. But you'll notice that we actually haven't hit this, this console log at all. So at this stage, this middleware, um, that passport that we've set up is actually not even being invoked. It's not even being run. So we're going to have to take the next steps to, to kind of get this verify callback being called. So we'll take a, a short break here. We'll pick this up in the next lesson. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.